Hey, Cookies here. It's about time to do an updated Mythic Plus guide video, and this time I'm going to follow the same format as my rating guides. So this is going to cover builds, gameplay, and improving further. Uh, starting right off with the builds, instead of using Warcraft logs, I'm going to use a similar website, but I just want to share multiple resources so that, you know, we got insight into how I look at logs and use that to determine what's good or bad or how the meta is shifting out in raid. And now we're going to use subcreation.net to determine things for Mythic Plus in a similar fashion. So we just head over to subcreation.net, we click on Mythic Plus at the top, and then we just use the healer dropdown and select the healer that we want to look at. In this case, it's Holy Paladin. Um, and we're going to break down all this stuff as we kind of go through, but I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between like my actual game here and subcreation. So starting off, we're going to talk about each of the talent rows. So I'm just going to go through here and just talk about the various talents. So Crusader's Might, great talent if you're playing. Um, typically, I would say this is best for like Kyrian because you want this when you're running Glimmer of Light and there's not really any time that you run Glimmer of Light unless you're Kyrian. Um, but if you find yourself running Glimmer because you don't feel like you need the beacons, then uh, you can run Crusader's Might and it's a very solid talent as long as you have sustained mana or ways to sustain your mana, which is basically making sure that your group is killing Ur and getting a lot of mana through that way. Uh, Bestow Faith is going to be your default like healing talent, so if you feel like you need more healing in the group or you feel like you're struggling or falling behind on things, you should default to the Bestow Faith, even if other builds say otherwise. Bestow Faith is a solid healing talent that's going to really help you if you're struggling in that department. Uh, Light's Hammer, this is mainly taken because it just does the most damage. So it's not really any other reason than that. It can do good healing too if the group is stacked in it, and it has good value like on Halls of Atonement and stuff if you're stacked with the Shard, and the Shard's doing a bunch of AoE damage to the group and everyone's in melee, then it's like a solid talent in that regard. But it's mostly taken because you can just throw it every minute and it does a bunch of damage. It lines up with things like Wings and all that, so you can you can just help contribute more overall damage throughout the key. Uh, in the 25 talent row, Saved by the Light is a very good talent if you take Beacon of Virtue. So just remember these connections I'm making, and then when I, we talk about the other talents, you can kind of go back and forth, or I'll mention them again. Um, but Saved by the Light is an amazing talent if you have Beacon of Virtue. Uh, it doesn't mean you always take it, but it's just a solid... Uh, it's basically, think of it as like... I would say if you find yourself dying on the third boss in Sanguine Depths, that is uh, Grand Proctor Borilli, I think her name is, where she does the channel and then the big AoE explosion um, to the group. This talent is very, very good if you find people in your group just dying instantly to the explosion, because what you can do is right before the explosion goes off is you can beacon of virtue everybody, and then if they take a heavy amount of damage, Save by the Light can apply a big absorb shield to them. And the thing with Saved by the Light is it can apply to everybody with Beacon. So that means if you're using like a talent like Beacon of Virtue, which is this is why it synergizes so well, is because it will apply that Absorb Shield to everybody if they get low enough, which is amazing for boss fights like that where the group takes heavy AoE damage. Uh, Judgment of Light is your typical default choice. So this is what you should default to unless you want to mess around with Saved by the Light and Beacon of Virtue. Uh, Judgment of Light is just free passive healing every time you press Judgment, which is a button you're going to be pressing a lot anyways because it does a lot of damage. So Judgment of Light is just free healing. You don't have to think about it, and you don't have to press an extra button to make anything happen. It just does healing by itself. And over the course of a dungeon, it will do a substantial amount of your healing, so it is a good talent to take. Holy Prism typically isn't really seen because it's just a button that you have to press to make it do something, and it just doesn't add as much value as things like Judgment of Light or Saved by the Light. So like if you were struggling in healing, for instance, you might think that Holy Prison would be good to take because you can use it as like another healing button. But in that case, you would just take Beacon of Virtue and Saved by the Light because it Beacon of Virtue and Saved by the Light is doing the same thing, but on a lower cooldown because it's 15 seconds. This is 20 and Beacon of Virtue is technically going to do more healing than Holy Prism. Um, And then in the next row, these are all utility things. You basically never take Fist of Justice. Always choose between Repentance and Blinding Light. Blinding Light should be your default choice because it just works everywhere in every dungeon, and it works for a lot of different things. It basically, think of it as an AoE interrupt. Um, and then Repentance is especially good in dungeons that have undead. So this would be off the top of my head. I may not get them all right, but Plague Fall, Necrotic Wake, uh, Theater of Pain, and I think I'm missing one. Plague Fall, Theater of Pain, Necrotic Wake, 
And I believe that is it. Oh, uh, no. Well, the other side kind of has some undead, but not really. So yeah, it's going to be Theater of Pain, Necrotic Wake, and Plaguefall. Because you have a lot of caster mobs that are undead, so you can use Repentance as kind of like a spammable CC on them to keep them interrupted and stop their casts and whatnot. Uh, we have in the next row, typically just always take Unbreakable Spirit. It's just going to give you the most amount of like extra utility in your toolkit, which is very, very valuable because the dungeon lasts so long. These cooldown reductions on these major abilities is very, very good. Uh, but if you don't feel like you need these abilities, like if you're just farming low keys or something, you can always take something like Cavalier um, to just like get through the dungeon faster. But I would always just default to Unbreakable Spirit. I don't think I've ever taken this talent off in Mythic Plus. And it's just because of the value you get from the reduced cooldowns. You get a lot of extra uses out of these cooldowns because of it. In the next row, this is that like hot topic debate row. This is the one where you will change up things the most. So I will just explain it as best I can. Um, Divine Purpose is just your all-around best talent to take. It's going to offer you free passive healing. You don't have to think about it. It's just a proc that you get, and you get extra healing. Same thing for damage. It can be also used to do extra damage, get extra wings procs. This talent is very, very good, especially if you're playing something like Necrolord, where you get a lot of extra holy power and holy power spenders to use, because then it's just like generating procs and it naturally uh, synergizes with Awakening, which is like the only talent we'll take on this row, which we'll talk about in a second. Holy Avenger, you should take this whenever you feel like bosses or pulls in the dungeon are too difficult for you to heal without it. So if you feel like you need a big cooldown to press in order to get through a certain boss mechanic or just heal like if a boss is a very long boss fight and you need something to get you through it that's more powerful than the sustained healing you get from divine purpose holy avenger is going to be your go-to so i take this in dungeons where like it's tyrannical and i'm scared of the bosses basically so this would be the other side um this would be plague fall on tyrannical weeks this would be um what's another good dungeon uh even like sanguine depths is another good example basically the, all those dungeons where the bosses feel very very challenging especially at higher key levels and i feel like i need extra healing output more than just what divine purpose offers and then seraphim in a similar fashion this is considered like the damage talent like you take this talent if you want to do the most overall damage in the dungeon and that's somewhat true, but Divine Purpose can also compete with that same merit. So the best way to think about Seraphim is if you want more like kind of bursty damage and bursty healing. So, you know, every 45 seconds, you're going to do a lot of extra healing. This is great if you're comfortable in dungeons like Sanguine Depths, if you're comfortable in dungeons um, where there still is a healing requirement and there still are things that are difficult to heal, but you get to use this cooldown kind of as like a pseudo offensive cooldown because you can press it and do damage, but not sacrifice all of your damage in order to, you know, do more damage. Like Holy Avenger, if you're going to use this as a DPS cooldown, you have to kind of go all in with it. Like you press Holy Avenger for damage, and then for the next three minutes, you have nothing. But Seraphim, you press it for damage, and you have it back up again in 45 seconds. So it's like not as much of a commitment and still offers you a lot of big benefits to increasing your damage and a little bit of your healing and stuff like that. So you can kind of just, the easy explanation is you take this in dungeons that you're very comfortable in when you're playing um, pretty much any Covenant except for Necrolord, I would say. Necrolord should always run Divine Purpose because of the synergy it has with its, like the tier set and the legendary and awakening and all that stuff. But if you are any other Covenant, you can take Seraphim if you're more comfortable. Like on Venthyr, I always take Seraphim unless I feel like I need Holy Avenger. That's basically how I play Venthyr, and it's just, uh, it just has, is what has worked for me. And other people are going to say different things, so just take my advice and, you know, do with it what you will. Uh, in the 45 Talent Row, Sanctified Wrath and Avenging Crusader just unfortunately don't match up to what we need this expansion. Sanctified Wrath did see some play uh, during, I believe it was the first season with Prideful, um, but now Awakening is just way too strong, especially with our tier bonus and 
now with Necrolord Holy Paladin being a thing and their legendary, it's very, very, very powerful to run Awakening. So just default to Awakening, it's a solid option. And it lets you, even when you spend Holy Power and heal people when they're full HP and kind of have nothing to use your Holy Power on, you're getting potential procs of wings, which is why this talent is so good, is because there's always a benefit to spending your Holy Power, even if it's like, hey, there's no healing to do. Sure, you could press Shield the Righteous, but you'll get more damage if you press, you know, Word of Glory and get a Wings proc, and now you have Wings for the next 10 seconds to do damage instead. Um, and then the last row, Glimmer of Light is basically your best damage talent, so you can take this if you're really, really comfortable on any Covenant. Um, and then you also take it on Kyrian pretty much always because it's just, it synergizes very well with the Legendary and how Kyrian operates. And then you take Beacon of Faith as kind of your default extra healing talent this is going to help you you basically put it on the tank and then you put it on the squishiest dps player so whoever you feel like is going to take the most damage or whoever has the least amount of defensive capabilities like as far as abilities go and stuff if you don't really know then what i would do is just default to hunter and mage those are the two best classes with beacon of faith on them and then after that you can kind of just default to any other range dps and then after that, you can default to any melee DPS. And then Beacon of Virtue is the talent that, honestly, this one you just have to play around with and see if you like the playstyle, because I think it's something that is very debatable on its viability and how good it is, because a lot of people will say it's never worth taking, but then other people have literally done some of the highest keys in the world and they're completely successful with it and it works for them and they run this all the time because they like how it plays. So again, I would just take it in a few dungeons and just play around with it. I usually take it, again, this was kind of one of those talents where early on when I played with it a lot or was kind of like messing around with it in season one when I was learning Holy Paladin for this tier or for this expansion, um... I was taking this talent on dungeons where I was especially scared of AoE damage on the group. So this was Sanguine Depths. Plaguefall is the same concept as when I was taking Holy Avenger. I would kind of take Beacon of Virtue. Or sometimes I'd be like, ah, I don't want Holy Avenger. I want to keep Divine Purpose. So I'm going to run Divine Purpose and Beacon of Virtue. Or it was the other way around where it's like, I don't really want to run Beacon of Virtue because I feel like my tank needs the beacon more. Um, than the group so i'm going to use beacon of faith and then i'm going to use holy avenger so i would kind of swap the like you know interchange those two um so play with it and again this beacon of virtue synergizes very well with save by the light so whenever you run beacon of virtue you don't have to swap to save by the light but consider it in dungeons where you feel like the group's going to take a lot of damage or if you feel like you need even more burst healing on top of what beacon of virtue already offers so i know that was kind of long-winded but now we'll move on to the next section, which is going to be Covenant and Legendaries. So we're gonna go back to subcreation for this one. So for Covenant and Legendaries, uh, as you can see here for Covenants, you can see that Necrolord is very dominant right now in the meta, and that's because of just how well it interacts with our tier set and also with the Legendary and just talents that we run in Mythic Plus. So things like Awakening and the nerfs to Venthyr didn't necessarily hit Venthyr really hard, but it just evened out the playing field between the other covenants and made Necrolord rise above because of like the tier set and stuff like that. So um, we can still see covenants here and we can also see legendaries. This is what's been run. This is like the max key that it's been run on. So this is what you can generally expect. It's not a big surprise. People only really run damage legendaries in high keys. As you can see in plus 28s, it's Vanguard's Momentum and Mad Paragon with Necrolord and also Mad Paragon with Venthyr. So I'm just going to break this down as each covenant and what legendaries you should run, but I'm also going to offer some healing legendaries and not just damage legendaries because healing legendaries are a lot, a lot harder to find on here for people who feel like they need more healing or are struggling because that's like a, a typical comment I get a lot with Holy Paladin videos is like, hey, I don't understand how to keep the group alive as a Holy Paladin. What do I do? You change your legendary and don't run a damage legendary. So what we're going to do is talk about Necrolord first. So for Necrolord, your damage legendaries are going to be Vanguard's Momentum and Mad Paragon. You basically choose between those. They're pretty much neck and neck, as you can see. There's both 28 keys done with both of them. They have different benefits. Um, they're not too different in the way that they work. So 
kind of just pick one. I would default to Vanguard's Momentum. I think that's, like, by default the better version. But if you like to swap Covenants, then Mad Paragon's a solid option because then you can just play Mad Paragon with Venthyr, which is what we're going to get into next. Um, oh, so real quick, we'll still go over Necrolord. So Necrolord again, damage legendaries are going to be uh, Vanguard's Momentum, Mad Paragon, and then if you want a healing legendary option, you should run Shadowbreaker, Dawn of the Sun. This is actually a very good legendary. As you can see, people have run it all the way up until plus 25 keys. So you can do very high keys with this, and it's very healing focused. It's not damage focused at all. So this is going to be really, really big in increasing your healing output as a Necrol or Holy Paladin in Mythic Plus. Okay, so next we have Venthyr. So for damage legendary, always Mad Paragon. There's no other option. You can see some people running Vanguard's Momentum as uh, Venthyr, but the key level difference and like the amount of people, 900 people compared to 68, and it's a plus 24 compared to plus 27s. So always default to Mad Paragon for Venthyr. It's just by far the best because of the way it extends your wings duration, which is very important with the Venthyr legendary, which makes your Ashen Hollow longer. So you need that wings extension from Hammer of Wrath in order to have wings for hopefully the full duration of Ashen Hollow. But even with Mad Paragon, you still sometimes don't get full wings duration. So that's why you have to run this is because it just, it helps so much. Um, oh, I have my Discord open, so I'm going to close out of that. But you guys don't think you have a notification, I'm sorry. Um, and then for healing legendary for Venthyr, if you are struggling in healing and need some extra healing output, I would recommend running Marad's Dying Breath, or you can also run Shock Barrier. Those are both two solid options for healing legendaries for Venthyr. Next, uh, Kyrian. Um, as you can see here, it's actually pretty neck and neck with uh Kyrian's default is Shock Barrier, so I would just recommend that first. And then once you're comfortable, if you want to try to push a little bit further and like increase your damage output in dungeons as Kyrian, then I would recommend either Mad Paragon or Vanguard's Momentum is really good. I think Vanguard's Momentum was originally popular with Kyrian back in season with like season one or season two before the legend like the actual legendaries came out. So I would just mess around with both of those again and kind of just pick which one you like the most. It's the same thing with Necrolord. It's kind of, they don't have necessarily one benefit over the other. It's just different legendaries. And then the healing legendary I already mentioned, which is Shock Barrier. You should always default to Shock Barrier or because it just is going to give you way more healing than these other healing legendaries uh, for Kyrian because of the way that it interacts with your Holy Shock and Glimmer of Light and your Divine Toll and stuff like that. And then for Night Fae, same thing. If you want damage, you should run Vanguard's Momentum or Mad Paragon. It doesn't really matter which. And then for a healing legendary for Night Fae, it's pretty much going to be the same. You either run Shock Barrier or Marad's Dying Breath. Uh, Shadowbreaker really only synergizes really well with Necrolord, so you don't really run it on other Covenants. Cool, so that is Covenant and Legendaries. Next up, we'll talk about uh, Soulbinds and Conduits. Which, as we can see here, we can see like the most popular uh, soulbinds and also conduits and stuff like that. So, breaking it down as easy as I can, um, I don't want to overcomplicate this. So I'm thinking about how to describe it the best. So, we're just going to look at like the top soulbind and explain why I think it's the top soulbind. So, starting off with Necrolord, you see that most people are running a many, and that is because of her main ability. Uh, it is. This right here, you give primary stat to everybody around you every time you press your Necrolord ability, which would be the Vanguard's uh, Vanquisher's Hammer. That's what it's called. Every time you press Vanquisher's Hammer, you're going to give this buff to everybody in your party. And as you know, it's a very low cooldown ability. I believe it's like a 20 or 30 second recharge. So you just get to throw out these hammers and give your, part, your whole party constant main stat buffs, which is absolutely huge. So that's why Ameni will be the default choice. So Ameni's default. And then Theotar or Draven are pretty much neck and neck on Venthyr. So I'll talk about both of them. Theotar will give more party buffs, more healing, and more burst damage. So your Ashen will be stronger. Your, uh, your group's damage will be stronger during Ashen because you take this right here, Wasteland Propriety. 
And then you also get more healing benefit from this Soulbind. So if you feel like you need help with healing or damage reduction and stuff like that, Theotar will be better. Um, or I guess I shouldn't say survivability. I should just say healing. Because then we have Draven, which is going to be the better Soulbind for Venthyr if you want to do more damage and have more personal survivability. So if you want to take less damage, you don't necessarily care about like the people in your party as much because you can heal them and you feel confident about it then Draven's a solid option for doing extra damage and also having more survivability because he gives you damage reduction and increased health and stuff like that. While Theotar gives you more mastery, versatility uh, to your party, and then you get some uh, some small damage reduction things, but Draven's is a lot more. So again, Theotar for more healing and more group burst damage, and then Draven for more self your own damage increase, and your own survivability. And then for Kyrian, you always take Mechanicos. You never would take really anything else unless it's specific affixes, because Mechanicos uh, makes your Divine Toll a much shorter cooldown, which is e extremely beneficial. And then for Night Fae, um, it's not going to matter too much, but I would say Karain is going to be the default choice because he just helps you do the most damage, and that's kind of all you need on, uh, on Night Fae. And the other soul binds are kind of awkward with Night Fae. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is conduits. So here you can see like the most popular conduit builds. So I'll just break this down as best I can. And we're just going to go over the most important conduits. So the most important conduits are going to be uh, your potency conduits, which is your, it's always going to be your covenant led, or your covenant conduit, no matter which covenant you are. All the covenant conduits are very, very strong. And then you have Focused Light here, which is increases Holy Shot critical effect chance. That's very important because of like the triage healing and stuff that you need to do. So that'll be your next most important one. And then other than that, the other potency you can run, if you run a third potency for whatever reason on some of your trees, you'll see some people running this right here, Virtuous Command. And it basically just increases your, uh, your damage with Crusader Strike a little bit. So this can give you more overall damage in a key if you run three potency, but if you can avoid it, I would honestly suggest just running extra endurance conduits because Holy Paladin and endurance conduits are actually extremely, extremely strong, which is Golden Path, you have Shielding Words, and then you have, um, you also have a Finesse Conduit, which is Echoing Blessings, which is absolutely huge. It gives a bunch of damage reduction on some of your abilities and some movement speed and stuff like that. So those are the main conduits. And then other than that, we have just trinkets, which the best trinkets, if I scroll down here, are going to be, you guessed it, stat trinkets. So run anything that gives you main stat and then gives you secondary as either an on use or a passive effect. So that's going to be Unbound Changeling, Solea Secret Technique, Elegy of the Eternals, Soul Letting Ruby. Uh, you can even take the indefinitely or infinitely divisible ooze which is this is basically just a nice like damage trinket so that some people will run and then yeah anything that gives you stats is literally all that matters is just main stat and then secondary stat as a secondary benefit that is always the choice cool so now let's go ahead and talk about some gameplay i'm just going to roll this gameplay in the background and then i might pop up some specific examples on screen and stuff like that as we go through uh, so the most important thing as a Holy Paladin is going to be spell upkeep and then building and spending Holy Power. So we'll talk about spell upkeep first. What do you upkeep? When you're in AoE situations, it's actually very important to upkeep uh, uh, Consecration because it does a lot of your damage over the course of a dungeon. You'll see my damage down here. I'm not going to be doing very much because this was a Keystone Adventure where I'm doing this key as like, 220i level or something i just recently updated it so you can or uploaded it so you can always check it out but um essentially spell upkeep is going to be consecration aura or consecration i should just say and then you also have judgment on the target if you're running uh judgment of light which is the talent and then after that you can then start building and spending so you have consecration down you're throwing judgment on cooldown now it's time to start building and spending, which you build with Crusader Strike and Holy Shock. That's all you really need to think about. You do have other builders too, like Hammer of Wrath, which you just use when you can. Um, but otherwise, just think about Crusader Strike and Holy Shock. And you either, you basically just always use Crusader Strike when you can on a target, 
And then for Holy Shock, if someone is taking damage in your group, you press Holy Shock on them. If no one is taking damage in your group, you press Holy Shock on the enemy and use it for damage. And then you spend your Holy Power on either Word of Glory or Light of Dawn, which you should generally in Mythic Plus just default to Word of Glory if you don't know which one to press. Word of Glory is going to be used 99% of the time over Light of Dawn. It does depend on some situations, but I would default to Word of Glory even in AoE situations. You'll see here, I am Necrolord, but even on other Covenants, when I go into this dangerous pull that's an AoE pull, you'll see me pressing a lot of Word of Glories. I'm going to also be using Light of Dawn, but that's because it's a passive effect from my Word of Glories from being Necrolord. But even if I was Venthyr here, I would be pressing Word of Glory on these people and not using Light of Dawn. Light of Dawn is a very niche spell, so default to Word of Glory. What Holy Paladin is good at is triage healing, not AoE healing. So even in AoE damage situations, you should be thinking about healing one player up in the party at a time. A lot of the time if you watch me play, you'll see me focus on one person until they're almost full HP before I switch to a new person. Like right there in that poll, if I go back just a little bit, um, you see that I healed the monk up before like here i healed the monk i'm gonna heal the monk again i'm gonna we're out of combat but it's the same idea i'm still healing the monk i'm not healing anybody else and now i start switching because he has this absorb shield so think of that while you're in combat is just heal one person up at a time and don't try to you know heal everybody at the same time because that's not what holy paladin is good at they're good at picking up one person and then another person and then another person and kind of playing whack-a-mole with the HP bars once you are ahead of the damage. The next important thing to talk about is cooldown usage, which basically on most covenants, um, you're just going to use wings on cooldown. You want to use it as much as you can, especially now with the tier set bonus and how it works. Um, you want to be pressing it as often as possible because you get cooldown reduction, which means that you get more wings. And the more wings you press throughout the dungeon, the better. There are going to be certain situations, but it's something that you just learn over time is like, when do you need to save wings versus when do you just press it? Um, and generally, you just need to save it for really dangerous pulls. So you want to have it available when you're doing something that you feel like you can't heal without wings. But other than that, the best way to learn if you don't know is just pr start pressing it. The moment it comes up and you're in combat, you press wings. It doesn't matter what you're in combat with, what you're pulling, you just press wings every time you're in combat if it's available. And then you will learn as you make mistakes, which is okay, we make mistakes and that's how you get better. Um, and then you learn where like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have pressed wings there or maybe I should have pressed wings there or things like that. So just press it as much as you can and then you'll learn uh, more quickly that way. And then what's the most important thing for uh, while we're talking about wings still as Venthyr is to always use wings with Ash and Hollow. Never, ever, ever press Ash and Hollow if you do not have wings. Um, you can get away with getting like a wings proc and then pressing Ash and Hollow, but you really want your actual wings cooldown available because it's really important to have wings for as long as you possibly can during Ash and Hollow because it makes it an actual cooldown. But for other covenants, you don't have that restriction. So just throw wings on cooldown and use it as much as you can. And then in between wings, that like while wings is on cooldown, that is what makes the difference between a Holy Paladin player who is having a good time and not struggling and a Holy Paladin player who is struggling and not understanding how to uh, like keep the party alive in the dungeon without their wings. Um, what you do in the downtime is what's going to be the big difference maker. And what you should be doing is utilizing all the utility that your class has to offer in that downtime. This means using Hand of Sacrifice, Lay on Hands, uh, Blessing of Protection, your own bubble, Divine Protection. Um, all of these things offer utility that allows you to keep the party alive and keep yourself alive without needing wings. Aura Mastery 2 is another really big one that I'll mention. It's So as you can see here, I don't have wings right now. How am I keeping the party alive? I'm rotating things. So I put uh, Divine Protection, or I put uh, my personal cooldown on myself when I had the debuff. And now we have another debuff, so I'm gonna bubble mine. 
So it's using that, I'm like rotating utility. And if you watch this video, actually, if you go back and watch this Keystone Adventure video, I'm talking through all of this of like, okay, if someone gets a debuff, I'm gonna press Aura Mastery on the next set. Or if this guy gets a debuff, I'm gonna press Hand of Sacrifice on him. Um, because you need to be planning ahead of like, what do I have left and what can I still press? Here I'm pressing Aura Mastery because I said, as soon as this overlap's gonna happen, I'm gonna press Aura Mastery to keep the party alive because I cannot heal this overlap of debuff right here. We would be dead right now if I didn't press Aura Mastery. So it's very important to be utilizing. And now I have wings back up because I was using all that utility as much as I could. And kind of like, I wasn't just pressing all the buttons at once. I wasn't pressing Aura Mastery and Hand of Sacrifice on somebody and Lay on Hands. I was doing it one at a time. I was doing one, oh, sorry, I punched my mic. <laughs> I was doing one ability at a time and rotating things until I had wings up. You're essentially trying to sustain yourself until your wings comes back up. And that is enough tangent for me. Um, this has been a long video, but I hope it was helpful. I'll try to break it down as much as I can in the timestamps below. But if you'd like to improve further, um, what I'm gonna offer instead of like going through a log and kind of like giving you the gist of what I would say is the most common thing to improve on, uh, I'm going to invite you guys over to my Discord. So let me open this up really quick. Uh, if you guys go in my Discord, I just opened a new channel. It's called the Log and VOD Review, and you can submit. Right now I have it, It's the plan is to have it be open for Patreons um, to be able to post in here, and then, but always everybody in the Discord can see it. So as you can see, literally anyone can see this channel. Um, and the plan is to just have Patreon people be the ones who are posting logs, and then I'm like talking about the logs with them to offer like a more personalized experience with the Patreon people. Um, but... With that being said, right now, just since I opened the channel and it's brand new, anyone can post in here. So right now, if you're watching this video, you can probably come in here, post one of your logs or a VOD of you doing Mythic Plus as a Holy Paladin, and I will review it when I have some free time and talk about what can help you improve and stuff like that or what I notice of things that you should, uh, that you should try to work on. So hopefully that helps. And uh, yeah, stop by the Discord, say hi. Thank you for watching the video. And... See you later.